All right, Shalom Rastafari. I had ended off the previous portion and said, okay, that was that was um, that was it. To it, but we're gonna square this off. So this is gonna be um, the part, you know, the part, the part four. Mhm. Mm so let's continue. We're still in the, on the subject matter of um, the Rastafari yard or the trod, the walk, the way, right? And how do we um, how do we manifest that true light in our daily liberty, right? And build the fourfold aspect of the fourfold aspect, which is the proper Rastafari life, the churchical life, the family life, and the community life. So what is the proper Rastafari life, the family life, the, the, the church life, the family life, and the community, the common unity life? It's very important that we, first of all, recognize that there's, a, there's the five aspects and the four of these aspects, as we've been teaching from Ephesians uh, 5 and 15, utilized in the recovery version, right, and expanding on the man is a trinity subject matter, that that is the true um, image that man, that the original man and and for purposes of the teaching, the original black man. Because when we study science, we recognize the black dot, you know, or the melanin, right, and, and, and how the whole gene situations in humanity, if we all have come from one, not one blood, it doesn't say one blood, but from one. That's an important mistranslation that needs to be noted in Acts of the Apostles when it says from one blood. It doesn't mean one blood, but it's from one, from one man. Right from that from that um, primordial, we could say black man or that original Ethiopian. In other words, Ethiopian, and we using that terminology according to the the anciency, in other words, of the terminology in its proper context. And as we mentioned earlier, it's interesting that in the East or Middle East and stuff that um, Arabs and Jews, uh, European more more of the European extractions or derivations, they basically use the term Kushi to say nigger, and Kushi would mean Ethiopia. So we refer you to Amos 9 and 7 where it says, um, Are ye not like the children of the Ethiopians or the Bene Kushim? Unto me, O Bene Yisrael, saith Yahweh. It's very interesting right there because that's, that's giving us a clear scriptural indication from the from the Nabim, right, or from the prophets, some say the minor prophets, and it's Amot or Amos, but still from the prophets, right, which is, a, which is very important to get a good groundation for Aina. But here's what the Holy Spirit wanted me to continue on because we had went over this in, I think, the Trinity teaching. Now the Holy Spirit had us go over this again, and I can cite that part of the reason is that it's in the book of Romans. Now, some say, oh, Romans, Romans, such and such. And there's a, there's, a, there's a misunderstanding that a lot of the Afrocentrics have put out there because they have not gone to the Ethiopic root. In a relativity sense, such as Ray Hagen and others who say, oh, there's no black, oh, there's no Christ, you know, and, and the Bible is a European because they are stuck in the, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, Gentile mentality in a white Western Gentile mentality. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they're not able to think outside of that box, in other words. You understand? Now we're in the resurrection, following the Son of Man in the, in the regeneration, should we say. Um, we are coming to that. There is, there is a resurrection, I mean, because this is Tensai coming up, or what is Pesach or Passover. Now, the part that we ended off on was actually verses 19 and 20 where it speaks of the universe, a revelation of the power and the deity or the divinity of Ha Elohim. So how interesting is it when we study this we find the black dot, the carbon or organic structure, we have melanin which also reflects light, right, and there's melanin also in lighter skin and even pale skin peoples to a, a different extent, and it's a different type of melanin. There's two kinds, uh, kinds of melanin if you get into that particular study, and a lot of, of the Afrocentric scholars and the black teachers, many of them have gone into some very interesting suppressed um, research, 
right, and, and really bring it to our people so we can better understand it scientifically. Now, we know that they're looking for the God particle. And they say, well, it's a dark matter. It is black matter and dark matter. You, you, ooh, and it's all, and the whole universe is made, it's all around us, but they don't see it, right? And, and in the same sense as a color blindness to the Moshiach, there, there is a color blindness to the true face of God, right? And us being kind of um, immature in this knowledge, some of us who just think it's just about the flesh and haven't gotten beyond the flesh, because they're trying to get beyond the flesh to the black dot, right? So... As we go forward right here, let us show this right here. Let's move that over so we can get this other, um, we can get this other slide or, 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 or your slide or still graphic right here to go through these three verses if we can within the time that we have in this shorter segment. This is, this is touching on the seven stages of, Gentile, of the Gentile world apostasy. Now remember that Hawari Apollo said that was first to the Jew, Tacitus clarifies that the Jew is a black Jew or Ethiopian and also to the Greek. So we have the black and white paradigm. True, when you hear the black scholars say, well, this came out of Africa, black people, all that is true. And now we see it among white people. The scripture bears witness the Jew first and also the Greek when we have a proper contextual overstanding, rightly rightly dividing or explaining the word of truth. So there are seven stages of the Gentile world or seclorum, apostasy, and that means falling away. Some mistranslate that and think it means rapture. It actually means falling away. All right? So let's get into these verses. It says, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. What's so interesting, if you study the Greek writers and, and other early Europeans where their real civilization in Europe began to sprout out of, the earlier ones admitted and acknowledged that there was a knowledge of God and the manifestation of God, at least the knowledge of God made manifest among the African, Egyptian, Ethiopian, and, and Hebraic civilizations. But they knew that, and somehow they went Again, said, and we can go through some, some books. They got Google books out there and other books out there, old books out there. And if, you, and if you know which books that they've suppressed but are available, you'll see it written all over. Then as you go further, as black people began to be enslaved or the Hebrews enslaved, they began to change these terminologies. The, the so-called Africans were called, who were brought to the West, the Hebrews, they were called Ethiopians for good measure. But then that was too clear, so they couldn't have the slaves or the enslaved read the Bible. Because it's clear if they read the Bible, they would come across these things that many uh, enslaved um, Ethiopians and Hebrews did, and they began to recognize wonderful, suppressed, and hidden things. And there's a book. Uh, what's the name of that book? The Light, the, the light that, that particular book. Well, I'm going to touch on that. It's, it's a very early book that goes into um, some black scholars or colored men, color color red men had actually went into that. But let's go through this. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. You know, it's like they, even today, they uh, take these musical forms and then just try to call them, oh, they're just American musical forms, right? Let's hold this right here so we can bring this in. Hopefully we can sum this up in this uh, particular section right here. Um, it says, but... They became vain. They became vain, foolish, worthless, like a, a, a breath of air, right? In their imaginations. Remember, as the days of Noah was, there were vain imaginations. All this transhumanism, you know, creating monsters and stuff. What is this for? You understand saying they came from monkeys and apes instead of saying that basically they came from, from, from black man because the white gene is recessive and it comes, it's so scientific. They became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart or consciousness was darkened and that matches what we said when we was, when we was on uh, um, um, the Gospel of John chapter 1, the light shining in the darkness for the darkness comprehended for not. They became foolish, in foolish hearts. Right, foolish consciousness. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible or uncorruptible God. Right? The true black is uncorruptible. And we're not just talking about uh, you know, the, the, the surface melanin. We're talking about the God particle. 
the uncorruptible God, right, and change the glory of the uncorruptible God to an image made like to corruptible man. And let us show where this, what, 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 what Paul's time, what Paul saw in his time. This is what Paul saw in his time, all right? Here's what Paul saw in his time. Remember, the Caesars were claiming to be son of God and living God and all of this kind of stuff, and they had to worship the Caesar, and they had these statues where people burn incense and all type of stuff that is even un un unspeakable, right? They're professing themselves to be wise. They became fools. So in the time that Hawaii Apollo, so Paul, was ministering in Rome, right, there was this duality that you see before you right there. Now, it's interesting that this was Caesar was worshipped as a god and the, and, and, the, and the careless black Jews who said we have no king but Caesar. It's kind of interesting that later on we'll get Caesar Bogias. You know, the Almighty does indeed have a sense of humor. Psalm 2 says he laughs because, he, you know, he, he has him in derision. Professing themselves to be wise right, wise, and, you know, the Greeks pride themselves on wisdom and the Romans, too. They became fools. They became to have, like, you know, incest and sex with themselves and all kind of crazy stuff. And we're talking about the, the hierarchy, their gods, right, their, their, their corruptible men, right? And they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. That is so very interesting right there. And when we start to study the Caesar Borgia's imagery, and we don't want to even bring that up, you all should be familiar with that or you all can look that up. Check out the exposed video, um, My Name is Caesar Borgia's. That's the name of the video. That's not my name, right? Um, you'll, you'll find more, more light, as we say, more light, right? So they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God, right? They changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Now, people would say, well, it wasn't just other cultures worshipped animals and, and had things. You're, you're right about that. You're right about that. that definitely, like nowadays, people are doing the same thing. You are very correct with that. But what this is speaking about here, what Hawaii Apollos is ministering to us, and this is the key in overcoming